<laughs> Hi everyone, welcome back to our show Healthy Ramadan. I'm Dr. Noor Al Nibari, and with us is Dr. Faisal Rifai, who is the medical director in Dasman Diabetes Institute. Welcome, Dr. Much, Dr. Noor. It's we're a really pleasure. We're excited to have being you here. here. First thank of you. All. Thank you so okay. much. We're going to ask you all about diabetes Fantastic. in Ramadan. Fantastic. Of course, there are a lot of diabetics in Kuwait, and um, of course, they have a lot of questions yes. because Ramadan is, you know, it's all about fasting, and you know, they will have this certain area with. That or you know time where they be deprived of food yes. and of course some of them are insulin some of them are on medical drugs and yes, stuff absolutely. so um, who should fast really if a, there is a diabetic patient who should fast yes. from them so th this is this is uh, the kind of the first question and it's a tricky question most uh, doctors physicians uh, suggest that type 1 diabetics who are dependent on insulin mm -hmm. should not really consider fasting during okay. Ramadan. And the reason is because usually their insulin injections are timed at specific uh, uh, times of the day which are associated with meals. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's how the insulin intake is, is uh, really uh, adjusted. Okay. And so our first advice to type 1 is really if you're a type 1 diabetic you shouldn't be fasting. So mainly it's type 2 diabetics uh, who are on uh, who are on medications other than insulin may consider may consider fasting during Ramadan, but really it is dependent on a discussion with their individual physician, uh, and it depends on what kind of medications they're taking, what times of the day the medications are, and if they can be adjusted to allow for that period of fasting. Part of that also is really dependent on when Ramadan is. So longer periods of fasting may become much more challenging than shorter periods of fasting, which may mimic closer to real life situations where that fast is manageable. Mm -hmm. So it's a, it's a difficult question and the advice is to ask your diabetologist or the physician that's concerned in managing your diabetes before you embark on that uh, I totally agree because you know sometimes diabetics you know do depend on insulin and mo not most of them yes. maybe some of them are on insulin yes. and um, you know it's, it's very difficult for them to manage their diabetes so always consult your doctor concerning whether you should fast or you shouldn't Absolutely. so um, what do you think um, if a patient is for example on just the oral drugs yes. do you think fasting is beneficial for them I wouldn't I wouldn't go into I, I think beneficial may be a difficult uh, a, a difficult uh, word to use in okay. that sense I think the notion is not to fast mm -hmm. if, if there is no need to but okay. some people feel that they would like to and kind of feel that obligation yeah, yeah. and I think if, if they're on oral hypoglycemics and oral medications that may be manageable so let's say twice a day Okay. That could be something that can be managed, timing mm -hmm. of the drugs. And then, of course, it comes with specific indications that we can go into later on on how to manage your fasting uh, if you're a diabetic patient and you decide to fast. So I'm sure that diabetic patients do have this question in which, um, what is the best way to fast on Ramadan? Yes. If they're, if they're willing to fast. If, if the decision has been made, mm -hmm. there are some tips, if you like, for or recommendations for fasting during yeah. Ramadan. Uh, one of the important ones is to keep your monitoring of your diabetes very regular. So during your fast and during the time you're eating, you actually monitor your glucose levels. So you, okay. do, the, the, you do the prick tests on a frequent basis, doing the random blood sugar testing, and, and you monitor whether your body is able to cope with that. Okay. And really, okay. yes, and, it, and really what it, what it means is you're uh, monitoring your body closer because uh, during fasting, you are more prone to hypos and hyperglycemia. Okay you know, lows in your sugar and highs in your sugar. So that monitoring gives you the chance to make sure that if you're dipping into a low, mm -hmm. you break your fast. And if you get into a high, you may need to take insulin or your medication and, and, stop, and stop the fast. So monitoring is extremely important. We talked about individual, individualization basically, which is going back to your physician and making sure that uh, uh, your, your um, medications are appropriately adjusted if possible to allow for your fasting to occur comfortably or as comfortable as possible. So that's individualizing your management or medication plan. Which is very good. I think individualization is the important issue here because not everybody is the same. Abs key point before getting to Ramadan, a visit to your doctor is, is in place if you really are thinking of fasting. Uh, then focus on a bit of tips when it comes to eating, you know, nutrition. Yeah. So uh, what we usually focus on is delay the delay the um, initiation of fasting mm -hmm. 
as close as possible to dawn as you can okay. and you break your fast as early as possible when 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 so tell us um, what is the best food or the best way for a diabetic to break their fast so uh, doctor that's a very important question because breaking fast is an important part of a diabetes patient who's, who's fasting really yeah, and timing that is very important so as soon as sunset happens as soon as you're allowed to break your fast that mm -hmm. should happen then yeah. and there and and to get the best uh, energy out of that day when mm -hmm. you're actually eating they should start with simple carbohydrates and examples of those uh, exactly yeah. examples of those are cake uh, fruit juice mm -hmm. uh, uh, pasta so something very high in sugar Ve right? something very high in sugar exactly really energy, exactly suppose, yeah. uh, pasta or bread from white uh, mm -hmm. uh, white grain uh, so the opposite though when you come to pre dawn yeah. and when you're about to start your fast you focus on complex carbohydrates which take much longer to break down and so you use that energy while you're fasting. That's a really good tip. Exactly. Mm. So uh, complex carbohydrates include pears, apples, apricots, lentils, oatmeal um, and whole grain, uh, uh, bread, so rice. So it actually has also some fibers. Exactly. Okay, that's really it takes nice. a longer time to digest and a longer time to absorb that energy into yeah. the body. Yeah. These are the two main tips really and of course uh, around the nutritional part you could guide the medication so whatever medication you're taking could be associated with the time you break your fast and the time you begin your uh, begin. It's really good. Um, well some of the patients as well um, they are at risk of dehydration especially when they're diabetics. Absolutely. So what do you have you know for advice for them like as in fluid intake? Yes that's very important so uh, uh, I, I I want to I want to use that as segue into some of the issues that diabetics face yeah, while really. fasting really so one of them you've highlighted dehydration mm -hmm. so the focus should be while they are not fasting is to uh, uh, drink fluids freely okay. and, and but not any fluids no not any absolutely so so they may start so they may start breaking their fast with something that is not very high in sugar, but high in sugar. Something reasonable. Exactly, yeah. reasonable. And that's to gain that energy quickly for the rest of their active day, once they've broken their maybe fast. Maybe just one piece of gamut, maybe. Yeah, I mean, exactly. <laughs> we say, why not? Uh, uh, and, and then we need to focus on water and other fluids to replenish that time when they're there. Because dehydration is an issue while they are fasting. Mm -hmm. and, and what dehydration results in is possibility of thrombosis. Mm. which is you know blood blood clotting really and issues in blood clotting yeah. and, and i think diabetics have a tendency they have yeah. a tendency towards that so mm -hmm. uh, making sure that you have a lot of fluid intake while you are not fasting is very is important essential. is essential Absolutely. now that gets us into other issues that may happen mm -hmm. which we touched upon so hypoglycemia is one okay a decrease in 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 in, in See, how, do, how would the patient know that of course there are a lot of diabetics who know yes. when they have hypoglycemia yes. but sometimes yes. some yes. of the diabetics lose this ability to recognize the hypoglycemia yes. so um, what are usually the symptoms so okay. Mm -hmm. they may feel the symptoms of hypoglycemia and we say once you feel that you check your blood glucose okay. and if you're if it's low below let's say 3.3 then you break your fast okay. there's no point handy to keep a box of juice with you all the time uh, i think or a piece just, of just 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 in case uh, just in case and as with any diabetic in a regular day to be honest yeah. the, you know that's yeah. a precaution that needs to be taken yeah. having said that as you mentioned some patients don't feel it Mm -hmm. So that's why we insist on regular and frequent monitoring. What do you think? Is three times in the morning or three times during the fasting? Is you it know, enough? Yes, I, I think you know, just to have a flavor of what's going on, yeah. if they feel they're tired, if they feel an issue coming up, you know, so maybe three times during yeah. that, especially initially, mm -hmm. to get a flavor of what it means for them to yeah, be fasting is important. You, it's, this is the way of learning your needs. If, if you're diabetic, you have to know Absolutely. what you need and you will need, you know that if you regularly monitor your blood sugar. Yes, I think it's really good advice. Absolutely. Absolutely. Now with the hypoglycemia, you've got the other side of things, exactly. which is exactly like an increase in, in, yeah. in um, uh, glucose in the blood. So you're prone to hyperglycemia when you're fasting as well. Mm -hmm. And that's y usually when you break your fast, you eat too much, you know, yeah. so it's the opposite. While you're fasting, you may dip into a hypo, mm -hmm. uh, but when you fast, uh, you, you almost get this rush of food that takes your blood sugar up 
higher and again monitoring is important in that and of course the uh, uh, diabetic patients who are fasting could be prone to diabetic ketoacidosis which is, which is uh, you know the and, and another dangerous ab absolutely thing that another, they should be aware of another yes absolutely yeah. uh, and th th again monitoring is one of the vital points in making sure that you are take your precautions or the necessary mm -hmm. precautions to steer away from those issues that exactly. are. So another aspect of fasting in Ramadan for diabetics, of course, um, I'm sure there are general advice that you can give them yes. so that they can be aware of during yes. fasting. So yes. what do you think? Well, we, we've spoken about uh, visiting the doctor beforehand, very important. Mm -hmm. Uh, we've spoken about monitoring. I think that's an important step. Uh, how to eat is very important. So nutritional advice could be beneficial before you uh, engage in fasting during Ramadan. And one important po one important um, uh, activity that uh, uh, diabetics sometimes kind of forget during Ramadan is. Uh, doing their exercise important some people get lazy and exactly and I, exactly. I i'm not a big fan of exercising yeah, yeah. but you know i try to put yes. it in my schedule somehow uh, and i think it's and uh, uh, imagine if it's a diabetic i'm sure they will have more concerns about exercise absolutely. as well absolutely yeah. while exercise is very important for diabetic patients in general there's a fear of course while fasting of you know how do we do that mm -hmm. uh, and of course you can time your exercise to be at the appropriate times, usually when you're not fasting, when you've broken the fast, and to get at least 30 minutes of moderate uh, exercise. And we've seen in the last Ramadan, um, in which people do exercise yes. just before yes. breaking their fast. Yes. Is this method suitable for diabetic patients? Be cautious of that, yeah. because that is a time when they could dip in a hypo very easily, to be honest. Okay. So rather when you're functioning normally, which is during the time that you've, you're not fasting, mm -hmm. It's probably the best time where you can time your exercise or daily dose of exercise okay. uh, perfectly. So during that time when you're comfortable, able to eat and manage your diabetes better, either with exactly. the medication. So it's always better for diabetics. If you want to exercise, do that when you're not fasting. Absolutely. During the period where after you're breaking your fast. Absolutely. I think it's the best way. Absolutely. So um, do you have any other advice you would like to give to our diabetic patients? Like I said, uh, we kind of to be honest, discourage diabetic patients from fasting, to be honest, yeah. uh, unless they feel totally comfortable I heard and, there is and a capable. guideline about that. Yes. Yeah, they, uh, there, w there is literature about it in which like diabetics should not fast in Ramadan, but of course it's individual. Yes, like, absolutely. Because if you're dependent on insulin and you're more prone to hypoglycemias yes. and more side effects, or you really have other problems, other health problems, yes. I think it's better not to fast. And uh, of course, absolutely. Islam is uh, a religion where um, it's very, you know, merciful. And uh, you absolutely. know, there are s situations in which patients couldn't fast. And of course, ask, you know, your doctor about it beforehand. Yeah. So, so you're right. I think Islam has relieved uh, patients in general from fasting. You know, and uh, if if you're sick or you're a patient, but again. Keep it to the patient, individual. Absolutely. Uh, type let one, them we, uh, let them decide, mm. but have a conscious decision of what it means to fast. I think that's the more important part. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Mm. Thank you, Dr. Faisal Larifai, for being here with us today. And the, these are amazing advice you have for patients. And I hope everyone um, takes these advice. And if you have anybody diabetic in their family, please just tell them the advice we've given you just now. So have a good day.